Hi, I'm Anthony from Sydney Backyard Veggies. Um, over at my corn patch, this is now almost done. I'm going to be clearing this part of the bed and plant out a lot of my uh, brassica seedlings that I've been raising over the last few weeks. I've been harvesting these corn plants for the last week, week and a half, and they've been doing really, really great. But now all the cobs are ready to go. So I'm going to come through, harvest all the cobs, pull out the plants and start preparing this area for my seedlings. So what I'm going to be doing this afternoon is these plants, I've been raising these over the past three months and I've been harvesting in my last video, I started harvesting them and actually now it's time to move them on. I've already started, just looking here on the left, started planting uh, my next round of broccoli seedlings in this spot and as I'm moving along I'm going to be planting more brassicas all the way up this bed. I'm actually looking at planting cabbage seedlings here but I've also got more wombok and more cauliflower to plant up this row. So uh, I've got a bit of time this afternoon, so I'm going to come through, clear this uh, uh, vegetable uh, garden material, uh, and then turn over the soil um, and then plant the seedlings. But um, I think it's probably about 20 years to harvest, so I'm going to come through and do that, and then so progressively start pulling out the plants. So just finished going through that corn patch and essentially harvested, oh, I think about. 20 years of corn. Now this variety is a variety I bought from Bunnings, so it's a, not a commercial variety. So the ears are a bit smaller, but they are still quite full. Um, and if I just pull this one open, you can see, still quite a really nice looking ear. Gonna come through now and start clearing out the bed. And I'm actually gonna start slowly pulling out each of these plants. And uh, once I've done that, then I'll come through and dig over the plot. So I'm back out at the patch this morning. Um, it's rained overnight, so the ground's a bit muddy, but I do prefer to plant out my seedlings in this kind of weather where it's a bit overcast and a bit cooler. Um, I'm going to be putting down some cow manure across the bed. So just to add that bit of uh, organic material to the, to the garden. And I'm gonna start straightening out the, the soil and mixing it all in so that the bed is level. And then I'm gonna go plant out my seedlings. And now that I've added my cow manure, I'm going to top up the nitrogen levels just using a bit of uh, dynamic lifter chicken manure pellets. And I'm going to spread that over the bed. I'll probably end up spreading two ladles worth um, of chicken manure pellets. And it's just essentially just a matter of just spreading it around. And before I mix it all together, I'll end up adding just a little bit of potash and dolomite lime just to the bed. Probably not as much as I added there's a chicken manure pellets. That's just enough to help mend the soil a bit more. And now I'm going to come through and turn over the bed, uh, just mixing it into the top soil with my hoe. And then I'll come through and set out my uh, rows. So now my bed's ready to go. I'm going to go start adding the rows and plant out my seedlings. But before I start, I just wanted to show everyone these are my cabbage seedlings. Um, the variety here is called Green Coronet and this is the variety I grew last year. Uh, and it's a really, really good variety actually. It puts out a nice big head out and it's actually very slow bolting. I had these growing all the way till late November. Um, I'm going to plant out pretty much all of them. I've got in the order of about 40 seedlings here. So I reckon there's going to be close to four rows being planted out. Uh, adjacent to them, I will plant some red cabbage and I'll show you those uh, before I plant them out. But I'm going to go through now and add my rows and start planting these seedlings out. So coming through to plant my seedlings, I'm just going to remove one of the seedlings from the base gently and then you can see that's beautiful. This is the kind of, this is the style of um, seedling I like to plant out, especially when you've got a big ball of dirt in the base of the roots. So just coming through using my, the back of my trail just patting this all around the base and there. That's planted now. I'm looking at 40 centimeter spacings, which gives me approximate this location. I'm gonna plant the second one. And again, try to see if I can get a seedling with a lot of that dirt on the base. And again, just planting it, bringing the soil around and compressing the soil firmly around the base. So continue through and continue planting these seedlings out.
So I just finished off planting out those three rows. I've got 24 seedlings in total and I've still got a few more seedlings which I may plant adjacent, but I might also look at planting two rows of um, red cabbage over there. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is just give them a watering in, let them settle in and I've got to keep my eye on the cabbage butterfly, cabbage moth caterpillars. They seem to be everywhere at the moment because the weather's still quite warm. I'll keep an eye on them and in about four weeks time I'll add my first side dressing of fertilizer to really get them going but really happy they're in the ground. I should be harvesting these in my experience from last year. I'll be harvesting my first heads, small heads, in about late May, early June so really looking forward to that. I'm going to continue on, it's starting to rain a bit but I'm going to continue on and dig in the rest of this bed and I will plant and my thoughts are red cabbage, cauliflower and one box at the, at the end there so I'll continue on, I'll keep showing you my progress as I work through that. So I'm back out at my veggie patch uh, a couple of days after I was planting out those cabbages and I was in the process previously of planting the red cabbages and unfortunately had a few uh, issues with the camera so I wasn't able to film what I planted but if you could just see behind me I planted two rows of uh, red cabbage plants there and they've been in the ground now for about three days and they're doing really really well. Again I planted them out Again, like the green cabbages, I planted them out at that 40 centimetre spaces in the rows and within the rows at 40 centimetre spacings. But to continue on with my, my work, I've come over and actually started planting out my three rows of cauliflower. This variety is called uh, Serenity and this is the variety I planted over in my south facing bed, which I will show you the progress of those later on in this video. Now again, these were planted out 40 centimeters in rows, 40 centimeters apart. And I've actually got a bit more space here on the right, which I will plant one more row of cauliflower. And I'll quickly show you how I'm doing that. But I'm gonna come through now and show you my seedlings first and then go plant out the next row. So again, these are my seedlings for my cauliflowers. And I did about six punnets worth and I'm down to my last two punnets here, which I'll just plant in this row, um, just to show everyone. Again, I like to plant them out this size. Been making sure they've been staying well watered and I gave them a bit of nitrogen fertilizer as they were growing, but our idea is just try to keep as much of that root ball uh, covered in soil. I'm gonna come through now, just quickly rake that bed and build those trenches and plant these out. So again, same technique as my other, uh, as the cabbages. I'll just drill a hole with my tool and then dropping the seedling in, plant them out at that 40 centimetre spacings. Coming across. Again, put it in. There you go. We continue planting on the rest. Then I'll come through and give these a gentle watering in. So now I have finished planting out this whole front section of my west bed with my brassicas. I've gotten a lot of them in, but there's still a fair few to go and I will be planting them out in other sections of the garden. But what I'm going to do now is just take you and show you how it finally looks and what my plans are over the next few weeks and helping these plants come along. So just to go through what I've planted out, over here on the left hand side of the bed near the lemon tree, just over here, I've planted my third planting of broccoli and these were planted two weeks ago and they're doing quite well, uh, although I am struggling a bit with um, insect damage and some, regardless of how hard you try, you sometimes always end up losing a few of the seedlings, so, but that should do okay. They are due for their first round of fertilizer and also due for their first healing. So they're starting to get a bit floppy in the wind, but I'll do that. These are the cabbages that I planted out earlier in this video, and this has now been day four since they were planted. They were planted on the weekend. And it's been about four days after. Now, again, they've settled in. There were a few hot days in the start. They've settled in. I have had a few, few losses, but that's no big deal. These guys aren't going to make it, so, but I'll end up replacing those. But generally speaking, all the other saline's have done well. I've gone the irrigation on them, and it really, really helps to keep them well watered. Adjacent to them, I have planted my red cabbage, and these ones have actually just settled in really, really fast. Uh, I've had no no issues with these ones. They've, not, they've had no losses 
they're a bit smaller and I find that they the smaller the younger the seedlings the the better they are for uh, transplanting so they don't want to rot and then coming across next to them I've got my four rows of cauliflower these are three rows that I planted two days ago again they've settled in quite well and this is my last row that I just planted now and hopefully they should do they should do it for this bed I will be planting sugar snap peas along this boundary line here and they will grow quite tall which is fine they won't shadow across the, the beds here so really happy that's all done I'm starting to install the irrigation progressively across the plants and I'm just running what is a leaky hose system and I'll just run that across each of the trenches and make sure that these are watered for about 10 minutes every day especially when we have a few warm days around I'm going to go now and just do a bit of work on my first planting of brassicas and I'll show you where they are at at the moment I'm over at my first planting of broccoli and happy to say that these broccolis are starting to form their first heads so I'll bring you in close and show you these uh, these were planted in mid-January so they've gone through all that heat of the summer but if I bring you in closer I'll show you the heads that are forming up on them now so coming close as you can see here this is bring you right in there and you can just see the first heads now I think all of them have heads showing at the moment which is great and it's typically in the order of about seven days from this size to harvest so just really making the effort to keep the insects at bay especially aphids and also while I'm here I'll also show you my cauliflowers as well again they were planted at the same time and I am tending to see some heads showing on these plants as well and if you bring it closer you probably can just see that probably not as advanced as the cauliflowers as the broccoli sorry but they are definitely small heads showing and they should be ready to yeah you'll see a probably a head in about a week's time to make sure that these uh, plants go well and develop their heads properly I'm gonna add a little bit more fertilizer at this stage and I'll show you what I'm gonna do to help that along so now that the heads are starting to show on the broccoli for me this is the time to do one last final fertilizer feed for these plants now as I'm expected to harvest these plants in the next week or so I like to use uh, liquid fertilizer at this stage and so that they can absorb that nitrogen fairly quickly uh, and really get them going now my liquid fertilizer of choice is uh, power feed more because it's easy to get from my local hardware store but anything with a high nitrogen content uh, this one's got 12 percent but anything with a high nitrogen content will do and what i'm going to do is actually just water a can full essentially foliar feed these whole all these plants so with my uh, watering can I'm just going and just progressively working the plants and just giving them that quick soak of fertilizer but I make sure that this is done probably a week before they're ready to harvest just to give them that last push so that's done and that's perfect for these plants and now these will be fine from now to harvest that's no more fertilizer for them um, I'm gonna quickly go do the cauliflowers as well and then I'll show you uh, how I control insects on these plants at this stage so in terms of my brassicas I do get asked over the last few videos as to how I control pests on my brassicas now generally speaking when you are growing brassicas in winter in the cooler months in my experience um, the cabbage butterfly moths aren't around so you tend to not get as many grubs or caterpillars in your plants but when I start planting my seedlings out early in this late summer early autumn period uh, the cabbage moths are still around and still um, can do a lot of damage now I do get a lot of insect damage on my plants but I do control them using pyrethrum sprays now pyrethrum Pyrethrum is a contact spray, not a poison. And in my context, I find it works well for dealing with the pests, especially the size of my patch. Um, I could look at options of netting the beds, but just in my context, the amount of plants I have and how 
the contact sprays work I feel that it's appropriate for my garden and for my uh, for my crops now if you don't like to use pyrethrum you could look at using um, some homemade white oil sprays uh, I will put a link to a garden in Australia uh, post where they show how to make uh, white oil but I will spray them at this time probably weekly as a minimum to really keep the insects down and uh, as I come closer to harvest I do back off my sprays uh, at least a week before harvest just to make sure that any of that residual um, contact spray is washed away whether it's white oil or pyrethrum Thank you very much everyone for uh, joining me in this video. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, I hope you picked up a few pointers when it comes to growing your brassicas and I hope you have success in your winter patch uh, this season.